Well, we're still piddling around with the old T-Bird. I'm going to get around to giving it the old power wash this afternoon. But first I have to go out here to the shop and do a video on the pinball machine that I've been promising and not getting around to because this car just came along right at the time I was getting ready to do it. And I have our fourth oldest grandson, Evan, over here. He's doing a scrub-a-dub for me on the interior, make a few extra dollars. And uh, that keeps me from having to do it. How are we making out? Pretty good. Pretty good? Remember, don't breathe that bleach too much, okay? I'll be all right. All right. No, all right. Brain damage is already there. Brain damage has already happened? Uh -huh. Okay. <laughs> all right, out to the shop we go. If you're just now tuning into my channel, uh, you just saw the 66 Thunderbird that we're working on that I got a couple of days ago. And we're now out in the shop, and this is the jukebox, the Seaberg jukebox that we're finishing up right now. I have a problem with the amplifier. Channel 1's not putting out the sound that it should. But we've pretty much got things going on that. And inside this cover is where the jukebox is. But this video is actually part one of a pinball machine. So we actually have three things going right now. It wasn't planned that way. It just worked out. So, you know, you roll with the punches. Yes, you do. You be flexible. All of this is a hobby. Lots of fun, fun, fun. Anyway, what we're going to do, I promised, oh, I guess eight or nine days ago, maybe less, that I would go ahead and well, take a look inside the pinball machine. And uh, I've already told you what's wrong with it, or I at least told those who tuned in what was wrong with it. One of the uh, sets of contacts on what's called, this, I, I kept calling it a scroll wheel. It's not a scroll wheel. I, sometimes I just can't remember the names. It's a score wheel. <laughs> but anyway, this set of contacts right here on uh, one of the score wheels in the rear is the wrong set of contacts. And I managed to buy three of these on eBay. I'm going to take off the contacts. And I'd like to go ahead and replace the entire thing. It would be a whole lot easier, but yeah, they just cut through all the wires with a pair of cutters and it would be a pain. I'd have to un wind up unsoldering anything, everything anyway, so to solder up the new wires, so why not just change the contacts? It's a whole lot easier. What, three, four wires and I'm done. So let's go ahead and uncover it. We'll I'll take it apart and show you what they look like inside. Some of you uh, told me yeah, when I introduced the pinball machine, some of you told me, this is good, I've never seen inside a, an old electromechanical, an EM, it's not a digital, electro, electrical, electromechanical Gottlieb from 1976. It's called the Card Whiz. So let's uncover it. Well, the first thing you have to do is you have to get this glass off, and then you have to lift the playboard up and prop it up against the head. Now, how do we do all that? Well, it's pretty easy. You got to get this bar off. This bar will release the glass so we can slide the glass out. You got to be careful. You know, I mean, this glass is pretty tough stuff. Uh, I imagine it's tempered. I don't know. It's, it's, you know, not easily breakable, okay? And the way you do it is you open up the old door. Now, if you don't have, if you have a pinball machine, you don't have a key, you're going to have to, the only thing you're going to be able to do is actually just drill out the lock. That's about all you can do. Open it up. And once you open it up on this particular model, you'll see that little thing right there. You just put your finger on the side of it and pull down. Well, not this one's a little rusty. Okay, there we go. Just pull it on down. It's on a hinge. And what that does is it releases a couple of uh, things on the top, which enables the bar to come off. Okay, see there? Nothing to it. It releases the catch in that hole. And the catch in this hole over here that grabs these two little ball things on the bottom of the uh, lock plate. Now, once we get that done, let me get this out of the way. Now we can go ahead and slide the glass all the way out. Let's close the door. And by the way, this is our money box down here. I thought you'd like let me show you what I found in the money box when I got it here. It's pretty rusty too. Everything I seem to buy is rusty. I can't figure it. <laughs> Look at there, down here was a, still a couple of quarters in this machine. Isn't that amazing? A lot of tags from the rear. I put them in here, a few, a few other things. This is the weight that goes on the tilt mechanism. It goes back and forth like this, and if you shake the machine too much, it, it, it goes to one side and energizes a relay and shuts your machine down. I used to hate when a machine would tilt when I was a kid. 
shake it too much but you can remove that and keep it from tilting all right let's see if i can get my hands hot little hands on this glass and get it started to slide off the edge here well, this baby was kind of stuck along here in the rails underneath this aluminum, so I had to take a little pair of vice grips and very gently grab a hold of the edge. It was it was up in here. Very gently, gently get a hold of it and just kind of pull a little bit, and I broke it loose, and it kept coming. If it doesn't want to do that, shoot a little WD-40 around there. you got to get it loose somehow. You don't want to be breaking this glass, okay? And you don't want to be chipping it and everything by putting a monster-sized pair of needle nose there just get a little something enough to grab it and kind of and you don't need to squeeze it like a gorilla either just kind of pull it okay now i'm going to go ahead and slide this thing all the way out and i'm going to put it out in the garage on a, on a flat table well she looks a whole lot cleaner once that glass has been removed huh but of course you know these these things right here they're a little sunk in you know over the years that's what happens it's not that bad really you know considering the machine is from 1976. Even the uh, the ball run area doesn't look like it's hardly had any wear. It's got some up here in the corner, but it's very light. Nothing really heavy. I've seen almost trenches, just like this right here. This is the starting area that the ball goes down on. I've seen trenches worn all the way around in these things. I'll tell you what, when I was a kid, I played pinball machines. I played them a lot. By the way, in order to move this machine around from my garage to the shop, or wherever else I wanted to put it, I went down to Harbor Freight and I picked up a set of wheels, one for each leg. Now you can, they sell metal ones that are kind of sunk down in the middle, which is probably the kind I should have went with, but I wanted to save a buck uh, when I bought these. I, these was only like $3 a piece or something like that. So I can, you know, I can wheel this baby around anywhere I want. It, it works it a whole lot easier. Don't, don't drag it around on the legs and the bottom of the feet. Get something to wheel it around on. The metal ones that Harbor Freight sells with the sunken metal is kind of neat because you don't have to worry about the leg, you know, slipping out of it. Uh, this here, eh, it, it could happen. I may have to get some kind of stick on things, but so far it's been no problem. If you take it easy. All right, I told you the next thing we have to do is get this play field or play area up and then leaning back against the uh, the head and the way that's done is now that we've released all the the bar we have the glass out we can do that simply by grabbing it right here with our hand and we lift up well there may be another latch and I may have to I think I relatched it let me go ahead and latch it down now that should do it now let's see if it'll work yep she lifts right up okay what i'm going to do is i'm going to lift her all the way up and then i'm going to, I'm going to pull it this way a little ways and then tip it back i'll tell you what i'll show you a little bit of the movement here tip it see it's it's riding on rails down here see those high rails one on the right and one on the left it comes down off those rails once you pick it up you bring it you slide it towards you and it comes down off those rails and drops down then you can go ahead and tip it back now not all machines have the exact same kind of rail system but you know some of them just have wood wood sides the older machines they'll have a piece of wood on each side with a, a flat spot that you roll it down then tip it up as you can see we're kind of lucky here with this the those rails they end right there they end right there they kind of you know kind of tip up a little bit they kind of come back up on both sides the other one is over there right there okay so now we've got everything tipped back that way and uh, by the way if you ever wondered what was causing your machines to tilt when you shook it too much it's this little pendulum thing here that weight is attached to the bottom and you can slide it up and down to determine the sensitivity of the tilt and if you tilt it too far it makes contact with this thing right here where the wires are attached like that there goes your there goes your game you lose your money sorry about that too bad so sad anyway this is what we got and uh that's the motor for those of you who tuned in for the initial video on this thing that was running 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 run at your reset motor but uh, all these contacts, you know, one of the guys, one of our commenters said, you know, you need to clean it first. Well, no kidding. <laughs> I 
I clean everything first. Come on, guys, you know. Some of you all think I fell off the turnip truck yesterday. I keep saying that, I swear. All right, uh, some of the machines, they have a, a clang sound. Let me, let me see if I can get my knife out. You, you'll, you'll play a, you'll play a mach machine that'll have a, a chime sound, uh, you know, when certain things are done. That's what's making that noise, these little old chimes, okay? Or xylophone. <laughs> anyway, and this is when you put your ball in play. That's what makes it go. And that's what the X, that's what the, uh, the bottom of a machine looks like. It's really not that complicated. It's repetitive stuff. One after another, after another, after another, all the same. And uh, just a bunch of wires. You have to make sure your wires are good. You have to make sure your contacts are clean. And, you know, just on and on, uh, right there we have a ton of contacts. This is the most important contact setups that we have in this thing. This is a reset motor and all that. I, mean, I think it's called a reset motor. Like I said in the last video, I don't try to memorize all this crap. I'd, I'd go bananas trying to do all that stuff. But anyway, uh, that's what they look like. And then, of course, this is where your light bulbs are that light up the back of the, uh, if I could find them. There they are, there's one, two, three, four, and there's others up here, here's some right there, and kind of neat, huh? It looks pretty good, and I think once I get that set of relays, or that set of contacts replaced in the back of this thing, and I vacuum it out, clean it out, uh, this board here also will come up, it's bolted in, and this board will come out, this board here, I believe, will unplug and come off. It has these large plugs that, that unplug. They go through and plug into the, the head back there. Look at the size of that power transformer that runs this thing. That's what you call a mega transformer there, huh? Let me back up a little bit. She don't want to focus down there too well. Pretty dark. Anyway, pretty neat stuff. You got your fuse bank here, one of your fuse banks here. And there's fuses everywhere in this thing. We have more fuses down here. I'll have to clean all that. But right now, I think she's about ready to go if I change those contacts. So I'll tell you what, let's go ahead and put this thing down. Put it back down. We'll roll it around, open up the back door, and I'll show you where that set of uh, messed up contacts are. And of course, putting the playing field back is in the reverse order that we took it out. We tip it down. We shove it back at an angle, then lower it down in, just like I did. Nothing to it. And here's the back. It's all metal. By the way, uh, the other jukebox that I had that I showed you in the video, the last video, it has no, it's missing the back. It's missing this metal back. So I went around, you know, eBay checking to see if I could find one. They're asking fifty dollars for that piece of metal. Yeah, I don't think so. All you need is a piece of plywood, paint it, put a keyhole in it, put you a key, and you're good to go. Nothing to it. My God, $50 for a piece of metal. You know, I don't know where these guys get off. I just don't know where they get off. So this thing has a key, and it just lifts it out. That's all there is to it. Piece of nice painted plywood. Matter of fact, you can put a few pictures of your girlfriend on the back or whatever. Dress it up, make it look good. You don't need to spend $50 for something like that. That's just dumb. Anyway, this is the head. The way the head comes off is you take out these four bolts, and then there's plugs right here that unplug. This unplugs here, which runs down to the underneath of the uh, the playboard. And once you do that, then you know you take this baby here. It should tip right on. Once you loosen it up, it should tip right on back. And you can get to it uh, to take the glass out and all that. This is uh, almost all of this is uh, solenoid activated. Each of these things was labeled with these little funny looking things, but over the years they've all fallen off. So I kept all of them that I found. And the back of the glass, the paint will flake off. As you can see right here, that's, that's paint that's flaked off from the back of the glass in the front. There's a way to restore all that stuff. It's, uh, you know, you can spray it with this triple thick stuff and all this other garbage. 
Anyway, the relay we're having a problem with, or the contacts we're having a problem with, is this one right here, I think. Was it this one? No, it's this one right here. See, if you look, let me see, which one was it? Was it this one? This one here. I don't think it's this one. I think it's this one here. Anyway, one of these, uh, let, me, let me see if I can find it. Yeah, I had my hand on it the whole time. You look at so many of these wires, you get cross-eyed after a while. It's this one right here. It's this setup right here. It is uh, burned. You see how badly burned that thing is right there. Let me see if I can focus in on it a little bit tighter. You see how badly burned that is right there? And this thing here is too short. It's all, it's supposed to be long and it's the wrong. So these are the contacts I'll have to change out, get them back in here. And then this thing here will be good to go. These things just slip right out and just slip right in. Like there's a uh, little screw thing just holds them in, but all the screw things are missing. And I guess the repairman decided to heck with that crap. We don't need to put up with all that. I mean, just slide them back in. Some of these have been worked on. As you can see, this looks here. This looks like one that's been worked on, nice shiny. But we'll be going, you know, through all this crap. You know, this thing here is your, uh, can't remember the name of it, that's very important. All these, all these brass contacts will need to be cleaned, shined up a little bit, made to, to look real good. There's some really good videos on YouTube to show you how to do this, by the way. I can't remember what they called that thing, timing something or other. I don't know, I forget. But talk about some contacts, look at that mess down in there, huh? <laughs> it's just going to be a lot of tedious stuff. What I want to happen is get the relay contacts in properly and then see if the whole thing will reset. And if it'll reset, the rest, I mean, basically the job is done. And all we have to do is just clean contacts and clean contacts until I'm happy. And you're happy. Well, that's it for now, guys. I think we've gone droned on. I've droned on long enough with this thing. And like I said, have I ever worked on a pinball machine before? No, but, you know, it's all a piece of cake. Until next time, this is John.